I mean, yeah. in the comics, I mean, literally one of the first few issues of the comics had Chrysalis kill a cat in front of the CMC. That's not anything the fucking TV show could got, would have gotten away with. Okay, where the fuck am I supposed to go? But, um, but Def, the yes. one thing I can agree with you on book-wise is that the Fazbear Frights books, I don't agree with them. <sighs> Mainly because now they got Robo, Bonnie, Fish things. Well, it's really weird. I, well, I personally can't really say much about, um... The later FNAF stuff, because for me, after the sixth game, and I saw that they started to later on make, like, different games that went afterwards, you know, with William Master returning, I just went, okay, this is probably going to be the probably be the time where I just do not care. Because as much as I like the idea that Scott was having fun making these games, I don't like the fact that they ruined the happy ending of the sixth game. Because the help. sixth game felt like a proper conclusion and a good send off to everything. Making the uh, the later games where where Willie Mathson just shows up once again, it's like, then what was the point of everything that Michael and by some extension Cassette Man, aka William's old assistant, went through? Then what's the point of everything that they went through to finally end William's reign? And he just keeps he keeps fucking coming back. Yes, I know. I always come back. I don't give a fuck. That man should have stayed dead. Are we talking about sixth game being security breach? No. Sixth game was the pizza simulator. Pizzeria simulator was not even a fun game, to be honest. I actually thought it was pretty damn good. I, I, tried play, I tried playing it, and I was just like, I got frustrated. I'm like, nope. Eh, at least it wasn't like, I personally think the, the, the second game was... I cannot believe they still... I was on the Xbox a little bit ago. They put the freaking Ultimate Custom Night game on the Xbox. I'm like, oh god, who's going to be able to play this on here? I know Markiplier tried, and I think he couldn't do it. No, he couldn't. Which really God sucks because it. oh shit! <laughs> he I was... ran that right in your head. No. Y you may want to be careful. No shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's kind of sad because I know that Mark was c is considered by many to be the king of Five Nights at Freddy's, but he couldn't complete Ultimate Custom Nights. No, yeah. Can't really blame him though, because god damn, I can't even imagine doing all of that on a go. Wait a second, did I? Oh, f you know what? There is a fountain over here. I remember that. Hmm. The fountain of youth. The fountain of youth. That's called plastic surgery. God damn it, Riley. <laughs> Riley, I'm going to grab my phone and I'm going to throw it at your head. If that's what did okay. I do? Why would you, you know do that? what you did? What did I do? You know what you did. I didn't do nothing. You did everything. I did. Yep. I did 9/11. I didn't know that. You did September. You did 9/11. Yes, you did. Holy <laughs> shit! That's like a south turn. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Sheesh. Well, that was a glitch. It just stayed there <laughs> staring at you. While he was in his running, uh, his running animation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll still go see the FNAF movie when it comes out, but, like, I just hope they don't, like, ruin the franchise any more than they already did. I really want to, and I, I, I honestly just want to see it because one, it looks fun, and two, it's li you're literally gonna have not old. You literally are gonna have Matthew Leonard as purple Lillard. guy. You're, drinking you're gonna me have again. Shaggy as purple guy. I That's a have to. Win. Yeah. And also, next month, Oppenheimer's coming out. Oppenheimer. Yeah. Coming out. Wait, isn't Oppenheimer coming out in late July? I thought it was June. Let me let me look up. Let me look it up. What day? What when? 
does. God, we're almost, I can't believe it's almost. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. No, hold on, hold on. July twenty first, two thousand twenty three. Ah, yeah, July twenty first. Okay, yeah, what the fuck oh, time warp so are you in? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so close to. It's like barely two months away. <laughs> I just want to. See, I, I just want to see who will win um, when it comes to Oppenheimer versus Barbie. Oppenheimer's gonna kick ass. Are you kidding? <laughs> I know, but many people seem to have this like cheesy obsession with the Barbie movie simply because they're not taking themselves seriously with the movie. We, we don't need it. If I'm gonna go see, like, because uh, because Key said at one point she wants to see the Barbie movie for the like, sake of just like how weird it's gonna be. If I'm gonna be dragged to see that movie, I'm gonna need some sunglasses because, good God, the colors are so saturated. Oh, I think it's gonna Ask be funny as fuck. Ask oh. Kitty to buy. Ask Kitty to give you some because you know she's gonna have a shit ton of them. Knowing her and her legacy of just knowing the '80s, I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. I just want like I want like I already have a a, a bunch of movies I want to see this year. Not only the Mario movie, <laughs> but I'm seeing that one and the Oppenheimer movie. And the FNAF movie. I want to see The Boogeyman, the Stephen King horror movie, and of course, um, Insidious, um, The Red Door. There's a new Insidious movie. I, I, yep. I, yeah. I need, guys, I, I didn't, I needed to process this. I accidentally pulled out the, uh, pulled out the bomb, and I just blew up that one guard. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least you ended up defeating them. Yeah, I mean, it was. I mean, was it really on accident? It was. <laughs> It'd be easier if it wasn't dead. Shut up, Navi. <laughs> you assassinated them. Oh. Also, Riley. Yes, they're making. An, they made another Insidious movie. This one, however, it's actually a sequel. It's not a prequel or, or a prequel or another prequel. Okay. It's also be it's also directed by Patrick Wilson, who plays the dad, um, who played the dad character, as well as um, Ed Warren in the Conjuring movies. So this is going to be his first directorial debut. All right, so I'm going to assume I have to replay the entire dungeon. Well, at least I know what to do. I mean, as long as you don't end up in, as long as <laughs> I mean, not English today. today. Def, you sound like me when I'm trying to record stuff for audio dramas. It's like tongue twister. Oh. Ah, here shit. she, here they are again to spout wisdom. Yeah, let's, I had to skip through this bullshit. But um, there's like a lot of movies that I haven't seen that came out in the last couple years. That I need to actually watch. No, I, um, I'm in the same like I'm in the same field. Like I still haven't seen Joker yet, but I hear it's fire. Oh, yeah, you need I, to see Joker. Like. I need to see Doctor Sleep still because I heard it was really good. <gasps> yes. And then I heard that Birds of Prey was like decent, and I'm like, I want to see it because I love Harley Birds Quinn. Of Prey, what I've heard was yes. actually passable. Um, like, and then I am uh, gonna go lay down. I'll see you later. Oh, bye, right. Right. Better, but, uh, Bye. Bye. But, um, but yeah, there's like a lot of different other movies that I own that I haven't even watched yet or touched, mm. like. Like I know, I'll get a lot of like I'll get a lot of hate for this. I've only seen the first Saw movie. I own a lot of the other. I own a lot of the other ones. I just have not touched them because it's a lot to take like in. Saw. Yeah, like, like Saw, people. it's 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 really just it's kind of the same type of shit over and over again. I will yeah. say this: I didn't know this until like because of the recent times of certain uh, subject matters. I saw that Chester Bennington made a cameo appearance. Really? Yeah, Chester Bennington made a cameo. Well, he mostly played a secondary character in um, the final movie, where he played a um, a, p a piece of shit character. Uh, but yeah. but <laughs> where he basically was a skinhead, and he was put in a trap by um, the multiple jigsaw character. Not gonna uh, lie, from looks alone, I could see him pulling that off. He did a really good, like from what I've heard, he did a pretty decent job in that role. I mean, not gonna lie, he kind of, he does seem like the kind of person who could pull off being a skinhead. <laughs> Plus, he could literally punch like the guy. Definitely was intimidating when you pissed him off. Oh yeah, but um, like, like yeah. Um, when it comes to the Saw movies, the first one is considered pretty good because 
Even though people say it's gory, it didn't actually have a lot of gore until yeah. near the end. And it was the but first the movie whole... to do that. It's, it's, yeah. it's more of the subconscious sense of having it. It's like, okay, uh, pardon me if I give out any spoilers. Like, I would still recommend checking the movie out. Um, in Skinamarink, the kid who's told by the entity to stick the knife in his eye, ow. Like, we don't see it, but you can imagine how terrifying that would feel. Yeah, and, oh. and again, not to mention what makes it what makes that scene pretty damn good is the fact that this is happening to a child, which makes it more terrifying. Yeah. There's actually also this one movie I just got off of iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, it's one that I found through a, a YouTube video of when the creepypasta um, fandom was kind of going downhill for Slenderman. It was like uh -huh. a Marble Hornets movie that they made. Oh right! Oh, that movie. Always yeah, watching. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no. and I'm like, oh. and, like I, and I'm like, I got it because it was on sale, and I was like, I want to watch this. I want to see it because I liked Marble Hornets <laughs> as a show, or like well, as a video series. Mm -hmm. But like, I guess I just never understood it because like I always grew Marble up Hornets. Well, like Marble yeah. Hornets existed during a time where it could exist. And yeah, like. like I always thought that Marble Hornets characters were part of the creepypasta fandom, but then I was told later on, like, no, they're not. They're just put there now because of the proxy thing, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Well, they were not only there, but mainly, and even then, and this is the thing that I've always liked about Marble Hornets, even though the character looks like Slenderman, it is not actually Slenderman. Yeah. The operator was a far different entity from Slenderman. Yeah. But many elements that they use from that that came from Slenderman were uh, that came from Marble Hornets were adapted into Slenderman. In all honesty, I think that Slenderman was a lot more um, more of the elements from Slenderman were taken from Everyman Hybrid. To be yeah. honest, when I first started my YouTube channel, I wanted it to be a Slender series channel. I mean, oh. I don't blame you. Slenderman was definitely a very interesting idea at the time. Yeah. And then think, that incident happened and ruined yeah. everything for people. I think yeah. I also was like, I think I was also like, attempt, I was also still like curious about that one Slenderman movie that came out. But then no. I was like, yeah, I'm like, but then I saw people reviewing it and I'm like, no, this is not even a Slenderman movie. No. What are you guys doing? No. The, the problem with the movie was that one, it was it was pretty much after the trend had basically died out. And yeah. two, they just didn't even try to adapt the character at all in a proper way. And to make it even more frustrating, and this is something that, like, Trevor Henderson, who created Siren Head and all the creepy, like, monsters that you're probably familiar with now these yeah. days, he like, said that his biggest problem with the Slenderman movie was the fact that the character design is damn impressive. And so it's incredibly frustrating that Sony just half-assed their way through this movie and did, and even took yeah. out a lot of the more graphic scenes because they started to realize, oh shit, we just remembered that incident that killed the character. Let's remove everything from it. Mm. Yeah, like, exactly. Really? It took you long to remember why nobody talks about Slender Man anymore. Yeah. Like, if you're gonna make something based off of anything, at least do your research and give it some respect. Yeah. That if, whole I, thing. If, if I were to if I were to have them like redo Slenderman movie, like based on, based on like at least either the Marble Hornets movie or do it off of Slenderman the Arrival. Yeah. Also, what were you gonna say, Riley? I mean, the whole that incident didn't kill the series, but like some of the shit that started happening later, like with Adam Rosner. Oh god, don't remind me of like I I never got into Tribe Twelve. I, I would was. see I, I did was into Tribe Twelve. <laughs> I, feel sorry for, I feel sorry for all the fans because I know that there was definitely something really special about Tribe Twelve. And the fact oh, yeah, that Adam Rosner was amazing. Yeah, and the fact that Adam Adam Rosner ruined all of that because of the actions he did is just Yep. God damn, dude. Yep. Yeah. I'm just kind of glad that ruined didn't his happen. series. He ruined huh? like fucking Everyman Hybrid series too, basically. Yeah. The only good thing about Everyman Hybrid is that at least that series ended before you know all that scandal happened. So. <sighs> uh, I also like. I heard this on Twitter. I don't know if it's even like a real thing, but like, um, 
they're making an R-rated um, Robin, um, or not Robin, but like um, Winnie the Pooh. This is a Robin movie, and yeah, yeah I'm, Robin not, movie. I'm, I'm not interested in it because I, I saw. I saw. It's domain. That's the only reason. Yeah, that's, that's the only reason they're doing this. Wait, what was that, Golan? You, you said you saw something. No, I was just agreeing with Shuka with the um, the Christopher Robin R-rated movie that they're doing. <sighs> like they, look, they don't, they don't need it. They don't. We already have no, Blood and Honey, look, which is it's not terrible. even. Like, it's public domain, so no matter it's, what we think, it we doesn't can't matter. Do anything, yeah. Yeah, it's in it public domain. They can get away with it. And that doesn't yeah. matter anyway. People have made parodies of Winnie the Pooh for years, and that's just what I'm treating it as. Another parody of Winnie the Pooh. Like, yeah. If you're going to at least treat a public domain source, at least be creative about it and not try to cash in on something for shock value. Yeah. That's yeah. the reason that so many people were Worst pissed off ones. with um, the Winnie the Pooh horror movie, because all, the idea itself was hilarious. I mean, Winnie the Pooh being a, being a murderer with piglets? Awesome! But no, the fucking people who made the movie made it legitimately serious. Instead of just simply making it a silly comedy, you know, a silly comedy horror movie, they decide to make it all serious and dark. They could have gone like, the Sam Raimi I mean, route. I mean, like I said, it's public domain, so you guys could do something with it if you wanted to. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah it'd be nice to fucking be able to make a legitimate, like, horror movie about Winnie the Pooh, but make it fucking funny. Or just entertaining so that no one looks at it and goes, yeah. wow, oh, I can't dude. Really look I just realized. Yeah. Riley, hold on a second. I just realized, I think, it's it, like, this marks about 100 years uh, now from another book that was adapted into a movie. Bambi, from Felix Salton. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, that would be in... Oh, I, I dude, would... like, I remember when I was a kid, um, like, okay, so there was the meadow... Which was like a a bit of a terrifying scene with like animals running for man or something like that. Yeah. But like, imagine if you were to write a story revolving around the meadow and the incident with like Bambi's mother being killed or something like that. Uh. Um, and it creates like some kind of like, it, it would be more atmosphere driven. Oh, I would love that. That that would be sounds like fire. Like it, like you would have to really think it through, but. Like, well, I mean, like, just expand on the whole art style of Bambi, because that's what Bambi really had going for it, with its, it like, was, art style and such. Yeah, it was the art with nature and such, so... Like, I, wasn't it directed, or, like, uh, done by one of the first uh, Asian Americans in the industry, if I, I remember correctly? I wouldn't know about that, I would have to look it up. <sighs> Let me see if I can remember. It was, it was, like, this guy who came up with all the art direction for the Bambi film and stuff was uh, an Asian American. I believe. I mean, look it up. You know what? Before I continue any further... You guys save in case it crashes again? No shit! <laughs> Get the <laughs> fuck over here, you piece of garbage. Fucker. Also, if I may, one of the things that I did like about Skinamarink, um, and this is mainly something that I've always been critical of when it comes to horror movies, especially involving children, if you're going to put children in horrific peril, have it be not only tasteful, but don't just have it there for shock value. Yeah, they did that the in... Death, um, that's no way to get ahead in life. I will hit you. Fuck you. They, um, cause, um, they did that uh, too, Jeff, in um, an Alien vs. Predator um, Requiem. They mm -hmm. did that there with that one kid getting killed by the chestburster. Um, oh, and, yeah. the, the, and the it was like, hunter. yeah, well, well, it was a chestburster one where the, the it came out of the chest. Yeah, that was more of a shock value thing. It wasn't really w meant for anything in specific, because you, then you never see it again in the movie after that. You know what? That is true.